and uh, thanks, uh, Frank, very much, and good morning to all of you, and, and uh, thanks for allowing me uh, to speak here for just a couple of minutes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've just come from uh, the Capitol Hill Club where I met with a, a group of uh, conservative uh, uh, lawmakers there that are uh, asking questions about what uh, what's important about this uh, authorization for the use of military force that the Obama administration will um, probably drop today. Uh, and you know, one of my part of my answer to them was uh, an authorization for the use of military force is meaningless unless you know who your enemy is. And this uh, administration has demonstrated that they are uh, unwilling to acknowledge and recognize who the enemy really is. The reality is, if they come in with an AUMF today that focuses on the destruction of ISIS and 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 ignores all the rest of the global jihadist network that we are up against, then I think that it is uh, a mistake to uh, to even support it, because the reality is our enemy is a global enemy. Now, someone in that meeting this morning asked me, you know, made a comment about uh, the you know the days of Hitler and and how, uh, how this is different from the days of Hitler. Well, actually, the, uh, the Nazi threat was far easier to recognize and to isolate. We knew who they were. We knew what motivated them. We acknowledged that. We, we, we talked about it, and then we isolated them, and we went after them with a strategy that was uh, developed to actually win the war. We haven't had a strategy to win since, really, with the exception of the first Gulf War, we haven't had a strategy to win since the 6th of June, 1944, when they came across the beaches of Normandy. And that was all out, and we were going to win that one. And we knew who the enemy was. Today, the administration refuses to acknowledge that this is a global jihad network that is motivated by the tenets of Islam. They are motivated by a, a very strict authoritative interpretation of the Quran and the Hadith. They are out to, they don't need an excuse to go after us. They don't, they are motivated by their theology. Now, thank God that a, a large percentage of the Muslims in the world are, what I will say, reformed. At least they reject Sharia, don't want anything to do with jihad. But that's not the point. The point is those who are killing people all over the world uh, are motivated by exactly that, the, the Islamic theology, and that compels them to build a caliphate. At the end of the day, it's this is not Christianity or anything like it. Their focus is about building a caliphate, and they are succeeding. And in fact, just since ISIS started um, in uh, Iraq and Syria, they've, in, they've increased by about 30% the land holdings that they have there. And this is the, uh, the last thing that I will say. One of the great mistakes that we have been making, supported by both Republicans and Democrats, is the fact that we've been arming and equipping the very people that live by this theology, and we wind up getting those arms and equipment back like we did in Benghazi. When we rushed in and armed and equipped people that were jihadist, in the very beginning, folks like Frank Gaffney and John Guandolo and others could tell you those are jihadists. But we armed them and equipped them anyhow, and then we got it all back. And my concern is that now we've got the we've got we're off on this uh, in this direction of arming and equipping uh, Islamic groups in Syria, uh, and and it will result in exactly the same thing. Ultimately, they're going to use those arms and equipment to kill Christians and Jews. And, uh, and, and we are going to pay a heavy price for this uh, repeated pattern of arming and equipping these Islamic groups that are motivated to want to kill us and to uh, establish this caliphate. I'm done.